You know, we, I mean, we, we spent our entire career talking about people who can do things that we can only dream of doing. Shout out to Ven That's Venus right. Williams. Uh, and, and who lives a lot, who live lives that, you know, are, are foreign to ours for the most part. There are some universal truths and some things that are general, but for the most part. And so, you know, just going back to Naomi Osaka for a moment, I think part of the reason why I, you know, was so passionate in my defense of her withdrawing uh, both, you know, figuratively and literally um, I, I think I was just seeing a lot of a lot of myself in her, you know, and this is and listen, Michael, like this is just personal. And when I say personal, I mean, this is just what's going on between my ears, like to say nothing of what's going on in the world around us and how heavy all of this has been on all of us. This 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 moment that we're in, uh, both from in terms of the pandemic, in terms of our politics, um, in terms of just this society. Um, it's, it's heavy and it's heavy in particular on black people. Um, yes, but just, you know, that's we're, we're conditioned to, to carry that weight. You know, we, we come into the world bearing that weight anyway. So that's 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 second nature. Um, for me, man, I just, you know, it just got to a point. Where. Um, it just got to a point where I, you know, Again, I think I was inspired by her. I was inspired. I was inspired by her. I really was. And I'm not. I'm not. I, I, and I was because because I've never even thought of doing that before. Like I've shown up to work, and again, work being a relative term. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not digging ditches. Still, you know, still a job though. I have shown up job. to work. It's a job. Yes, I have shown up to work under unprecedented circumstances. I have shown up to work. Uh, and giving my all day in and day out for 20 years. That I can say for myself. I haven't always done it right, but I know where my heart has been. I've never thought of, of, of getting to a place of saying, yeah, I'm not, I don't feel well. And somebody posted this the other day. Somebody tweeted this the other day. I forgot who it was. It might have been my man Jimmy Spencer from uh, Uninterrupted. I think it was him. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, he said, if uh, if Naomi Osaka or, or if you or if you call it, he was talking about Naomi Osaka, but he said, if you call into your job and you say, you know what, I'm under the weather today. Or I got food poisoning. Or anything. Right. It's completely acceptable. But but if you say, but if you're if you're mentally just not there. If you're not in a good place mentally, that's frowned upon. That's taboo. That's like, what? Like, what, what do you mean exactly? Mm. Yeah, and so and, and 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 nobody I haven't experienced that here. I'm talking about even within my own mind. Like I felt like I can't I can't do I just come on Michael get get over yourself. This. Get over yourself. <laughs> and just do it. Just do, do do your job. Shut up. Nobody cares though. Nobody cares. Boo hoo. Go do your job. Your job. <laughs> you know, they got people out here working for real for real making a fraction of what we make. And so it's like that that tug of war in my own mind is what I've struggled with for a long time. And, you know, and a child shall lead them, relatively speaking, a child. She's what, 23. But, you know, that's why I think I was just so gung ho about what about what Naomi did, because it's like, and that's why and that's why I was saying to you the other day, not keeping score and not saying I told you so, but I'm saying I'm express, I'm telling you where that passion was coming from. Is like that's what I was saying to you the other day. It's not past tense. The, how messy that whole situation was handled, Michael. They, they had twenty. The New York Times did ten columns the other day about Naomi Osaka. Deadspin did five. Everywhere, like, you know, there's. A, I got a Tyler Times column. I got bookmarked to read. Like the conversation around Naomi Osaka this week has been ongoing. It hasn't stopped. I even wanted to ask Jason Johnson about it from, from his point of view. Um, yeah, and so and we will. Yeah, I, um, I, I guess I, I guess it just made me it just she, she just kind of I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, you have the French Open and you're playing a game, you know, or, you, or you're getting paid a bunch of money and oh, you got to talk to press. What if she just don't freaking feel like it? What if she just don't feel like it? Why? Why is our culture? Why are our norms <laughs> such that that's wrong? If she just don't feel like it. And maybe she had to be the first one through. I guess I can tell you it ain't never easy being the first one through 
Maybe she had to be the first one to actually right. just like be like, you know, what? I just I, I'm not here for it. And maybe this sparks a, a larger conversation about obligations in general athletes in particular when it comes to press, but obligations in general and what we feel like we're obligated to do sometimes at the expense of our own mental health. Yeah, and I, I think uh, Mike, it's a good question. All right, so let, let me pick up on that. Why is that? Why is it that you call in to work and say, uh, I got strep throat, uh, you know, I got flu symptoms or something, or, or I just I just don't feel great today uh, physically, and they understand, and mentally they don't. It's because most most companies, including sports companies, most companies have not adequately dealt with mental health. Now that's not to say they don't acknowledge that mental health is an issue. I'm talking about putting it out there as much as you put out that, hey, there's some uh, there's some donuts in the break room. I mean, it should just really be a part of the culture and make it explicit, like signage up all around any kind of physical structure that you work out, work at that there's there are there are mental health professionals ready to work with you if you need them. It's part of your benefits. Uh, this is understandable. If you're going through something, this is what we have. These are the resources that we have available. But the, the culture is just not wired that way. It's still unbelievably, yeah. as much as people have talked about it, people, excuse me, people have been up front talking about, hey, I talked to my therapist. I have therapy. I think therapy is healthy. There's so many people who have said it, it still hasn't really stuck in the culture. So the default yeah. mode is, hey, you got to power through it. And you know what I hate to hear? And uh, 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 I'm not going to tell my kids to slap me because that's disrespectful. But I'm going to say to my kids, hey, <laughs> pinch me. Give me a little, give me a little tap. If I become one of these parents, hey, I did this and I turned out all right. I mean, that is the most, yeah. that is the lamest. You turned out in spite of that it is what is you did. The, you turned out all right, that, right in spite right, of it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You didn't yeah. turn. And, and, and think about yeah. think about the logic. Think about think about what the statement says. I turned out all right. Why is that your standard? All right. You turned yeah. out all right. You made it yeah. through. You're mediocre. You're serviceable because you went through this experience. Right. You survived. And you're saying you went through this experience. <laughs> yeah. Right. You went through this experience. You want to do that again? You think that's what made you tough? That's what gave you your work ethic? That somebody was uh, yeah. did something that was just a little awkward, that wasn't complete, that didn't speak to your whole being, and yet you survived it, and you want to pass that on to somebody else? So I, I think we really are default. We go back to our defaults too often, and our default is yeah. power through it. Come on now. Come well, on, it's tell funny it up. You say that. There was a recent example, and some would, some would say this is, this, is, this is soft. This whole thought process is soft because it's like, and there is something to be said for you know unto whom much is given much is required and there are obligations professional obligations whether you're yeah. Naomi Osaka or Michael Holly and Michael Smith there, there there is there's something to be said for that of, of of just doing your job what happened to what happened to you know strength and commitment and integrity oh, got it okay that's fine yeah. okay but it's funny you said that about your kids because i had a conversation with uh, with Savannah the other day, uh, not too long ago, and she wanted to discontinue an activity, and I use the phrase discontinue intentionally, because I was torn between wanting to teach a lesson and be like not not set a precedent of her quitting something because it wasn't going well, it wasn't going her way. And that being her default, that being how she responded to adversity. So I, out of one side of my mouth, I'm like, this is not how you handle difficult times. You know, tough times don't last, tough people do, right? Like, this is not how you handle difficult times. Um, I was like, have you, have you looked yourself in the mirror and have you done everything possible in your control to rectify the situation? Before, before you decide to go to that extreme, let's take progressive measures to figure out whether or not there's a there's a way to improve the circumstances. And if the answer is yes, and you want to still discontinue, just know that you can't always do that. Sometimes you're going to have to do things that you don't want to do 
in order to someday do the things that you want to do. Do things, do things that you have to do, excuse me, to one day do the things you want to do. But then on the other side of my mouth, Michael, on the other side of my mouth, I was like, but by the same token, if you're genuinely unhappy, I'm not going to subject you to doing something that makes you unhappy. Like, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you, you got to do this because no daughter of mine, no son of mine is going to quit. You got to keep doing this. If, it, if you're, if you're unhappy, if you're spending time doing something that you don't want to do, take it from me because mm -hmm. one of my biggest regrets in life is accommodating way too many people and way too many standards and way too many expectations and wasting time doing stuff that I don't really want to do. And I've done that far too long or putting up with crap longer than I need to put up with it. And so I was like, listen, I was like, bear with me as I try to repent, which means to change my mind and to, and to, and to shift my paradigm from thinking that, yo, you just got to like suck it up. Because yes, yeah. there is something to be said for mental and physical toughness, but there is also something to be said for advocating for oneself and prioritizing your own peace and your own mental health and saying, no, I, I'm, I don't care what you think I should do or how you think I should handle right. it. I'm not, I'm not going to continue doing to something. This is what's best for me. And regardless of whether, just to bring it back to Naomi, regardless of whether Naomi could have done things differently or better, that's subjective from the outside looking in. All, her only yeah. obligation is to herself, first and foremost, and last most, if that's a word. That, 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 is, that is her only priority, period. She don't owe the rest of us jack, least of all the media. So that's been on my heart all week, and, when you, and, I, and I appreciate you the way you started it, because it just kind of like, I was like, damn, dog, you just it, got, like I, <laughs> I, I feel better talking to you already. You know, Bill Cowher called you as licensed therapist. I, little did I know uh, <laughs> my session was in a couple of days. Um, I feel better talking about it already. So when you ask God to use you, you know, he was using he was using you to give me license to speak on something that I just guess I just need to get off my chest you know, in general. Um, and don't nobody tune in a brother from another to hear us whine. But I think like you said earlier, they, they expect to hear us be our authentic selves. Um, and that's and, right. And just speak and, and whatever we're whatever we're feeling in the moment, you know, and you know, I, I think it's a good conversation to have the last thing I'll say on it, whether it's Michael Smith or Naomi Osaka, I think it's a good conversation to have. Because it brings out a, a number of perspectives. And I think all of them are valid, especially if you feel like that, uh, if going through something has worked for you. So one of those perspectives that works for people is, hey, I don't care how I feel. I compartmentalize. I can feel terrible. Hey, I lost, uh, I lost a loved one. Uh, my marriage dissolved, whatever it is. And I went to work the next day and I just put that aside and I dealt with the job I and then I felt up. miserable at home. Okay. I played 82 games. And that works for some people. <laughs> no. Listen, right. right. That works for some people. <laughs> and then to hear them talk about it, I think is instructive. That helps. And then to hear people say, look, uh, if I need to take a day off, even if it's not, if it's, it, it might be a random Wednesday or Thursday and I need to take a day off. Uh, I got the kind of, uh, I've got the kind of relationship with the people I work with and I owe it to myself. If I don't have it that day, I'll just say, I don't have it. And I don't feel guilty yeah. about it. This is what works for me. I just that think was the other thing we for just me. need to have that was the other thing for me. I didn't want to without judgment. Yeah, I didn't want to without judgment. The, the other thing for me and, and uh, we'll, we'll take a break momentarily as I didn't I didn't want to. I also just didn't want to come in and suck more than usual. That is <laughs> I didn't want to come in and just <laughs> I didn't want to come in and be, you know, less than less than what you 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 need you you expect, you know, what the staff expects what our loyal viewers who we appreciate expect. You know, I didn't want to, I don't want to be less than myself. Um, you know, so that was, that was, that was a big part of it. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a new day and I, and I hope that we continue to just get, get better as a society about it. I mean, it, it wasn't that long ago when, you know, load management, um, <laughs> you know, was, 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 was a controversial step to take. Um, 
you know, in, in professional basketball. And, and, and the mental health conversation still has a long way to go in professional sports because honestly, and I'll, I'll just make this last point, I promise. We, I said last point five minutes. And ago, in society. Minutes, but it we keep saying professional over. sports. Well, you know what? But we keep saying professional well, sports and we're and, and it's beyond yeah. that. It's beyond. It's it's in it's in corporate oh, no, no, it's, America. No, it's society it's at large. But this is, no, no, no. Right. No, no, it totally is. It's society at large. This is why I talked about sabbaticals with Aaron Rodgers recently. The thing I was making about sports, it's, it's a societal issue. But the the, the and, and oftentimes sports is a is a trailblazer or is a is a is a is a leader when it comes to uh, society's evolution. It's at the it's at the forefront of a lot of these conversations about equity and inclusion and diversity or what have you. Um social justice, all those things. But when it comes to mental health, and I think it's because it's it contradicts the very nature of sports. The very nature of sports is about toughness. It's about endurance. It's about focus. It's about overcoming obstacles and adversities. It's about winning at all costs. You know, it's about making no excuses. So when, when vulnerability and sports do not go hand in hand, that's antithetical to sports is vulnerability. And so that's why I think sports yeah. has such a longer way to go because especially mass, it's especially male sports vulnerability and masculinity is like a new thing. You know what I mean? Like those two that would that would have been an oxymoron. A, vul a vulnerable man would have been an oxymoron at one point, you know? So right. yeah, uh, that's why I think and sports still, is really having to do some catching up, you know? Yeah, it's still it's still a struggle for uh, a lot of people. And maybe uh, especially when we're talking about sport male sports. I mean, we got a lot of things going on society at large talking about mental health men and women and then men what a lot of men have been conditioned to be have been told to be and then trying to wrestle through that untangle that there's a lot going on there. I mean, uh, not to take us down a, a side road, but just as a, as an a side an aside. Um, just think about paternity leave for some guys and mm -hmm. how when that comes right. up in professional sports how some of our colleagues uh, not necessarily at NBC but perhaps uh, but just some of our colleagues in the media males particularly have really struggled with that have struggled with yeah this athlete is not going to be there for a week and a half because he's on paternity leave hey <laughs> Yeah. That just blows some some guys that just can't even relate to it. Like, wait a minute, what? You didn't have a baby, yet, yeah. But don't you understand that that you're a part of it. You're a part of. You're gonna try to, that. That's part of being a good father. Just emotional support, allowing your wife holding yeah. the baby for two hours, and just allowing your wife to get a nap in week two or week hmm. three at home. Yeah. You know. So we got we, we yeah. got a, we got a long way to go. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.